Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be the start of a new series where we touch on some concepts of controls engineering. And uh, the software I'll be using is RS Logics, um, which is Rockwell Allen Bradley's uh, controls engineering design language for PLCs. But uh, the what we'll be doing most of this in is ladder logic, and that's pretty generic across a lot of PLC manufacturers. So in general, the concepts covered here will really help you writing PLC code in any format that uses ladder logic and a lot of the concepts extend to general programming so um, controls engineering is fairly niche so if you want more general code like Python or something like that I suggest you check out the other playlists on this channel but assuming you know why you're here let's dive right into it um, today we'll be looking at the basics of boolean functions which in controls uh, and code in general. Boolean means binary, means zero or one, true or false. It's also called digital a lot, and it's also called discrete a lot. It's essentially a game of semantics. You'll need to be familiar with all those terms because it could be called any of those at any given time. But in general, there's really only five or six things that you can do with a one or a zero in most PLC software. So, and when I say PLC, I mean programmable logic controller. That's the driver for most controls engineering. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. The most common um, bit, uh, the two commands that you'll see for checking conditions are going to be a true or a false. So in Rockwell, uh, they're called XIC and XIO. That's examine if open, examine if closed. Um, examine if open <clears throat> is also called examine when off because uh, that's when the bit that you're looking at right true false one or zero is reading a zero and examine if closed closed is on which is also when the bit is reading a one so what I have here is in XIC we're checking when this bit is on and one of the most common examples I can use for a true false would be let's think of a light switch okay so let's say that this is a light switch and when the light switch is in position on what do we want to do we want the light to be on so now we need to start talking about an output condition so pretty much every rung of code and the reason we have an error on this every rung of code needs input conditions and then output instructions so like what are you checking to see if it's true and then what will that rung actually do so here we're basically saying if the light switch is on right a one then what we actually want to do is turn on the light so we're using a, an instruction here that's called an OTE which is essentially only true while it's energized so while the light switch is a one and stays a one the whole time that's when the light is on but what's nice about that using this format is that as soon as the light switch goes off in this code that OTE ceases to be true so an important thing about OTEs is you can only use one in a program because you can't have two different spots that are trying to turn the same thing on I mean think if there was a second light switch down here that could be turned on independently from the first one how would they know whether or not they are supposed to be active or that's supposed to be active so if you're going to use OTEs there needs to only be one spot that you use it um, but let's go ahead and add another instruction and this time we're going to use an XIO and say what we want to have happen when the light switch is off um, I'm just using this to demonstrate why you would want um, to use an XIO you don't need to, to have one of each right you can have just this rung of code that's perfectly valid but let's say when we turn the light switch off now the, d the room is kind of dark we're going to energize a night light when that's true and so this is essentially saying if the light switch is off our night light is going to be on if the light switch is on then the overhead light is on but what's important to understand is just with these two rungs of code we've also made it so the opposite will be off so the light switch is off 
then the overhead light is off just by having an OTE because it's only active while the conditions on that rung are true. So let's go ahead and take a look at what if you don't want to use an OTE because there's obvious limitations to it only being active while the input conditions are active. Uh, let's take a look at an example as if you were in a car with like a push to start functionality. So you press a start button, right? So now your start button is a one. You push the start button. We're going to turn on the engine, but it would be really inefficient to have an engine that was only running while you were actively holding down the push to start button, right? You can think of the example of a key where the key needs to be forward and fully engaged the whole time the engine is running. That's a situation you would want to use an OTE. You're checking the status of a key. But if you have a button-based engine command, then when the engine starts, you want the engine to turn on and stay on even after we've stopped pushing the button. So what's kind of nice is there are instructions called OTL and OTU, and those are going to be output latch and unlatch commands. So this is saying when I've pushed the start button, latch the engine, make it a one, make it true. But when I release that button, there's no code currently that is going to make the engine stop, which is exactly what you want. You don't want a car that you just drive around and the whole time you have to be holding the button in to have it running. So obviously now you're thinking, well, what makes the engine stop then? And let's say you push the stop button to get the engine to stop. And then the associated command is an OTU. So typically with Boolean, with digital on off logic, you can either code things as an OTE, which handles turn on and turn off conditions for, for most things, or you can use OTL, OTU pairs. So like in this instance, we're saying when the start button is pressed, then the engine's going to turn on. When the stop button is pressed, the engine's going to turn off. A quick thing about um, just general logic formatting in most PLC programs, they do scan top to bottom. So if you do have two pieces of code where think someone was pushing both these buttons simultaneously, then you would want the stop button second because if someone's holding down both these buttons, you probably don't want the car to run. You should make whatever's the safety condition what's going to win out and override. So putting stop button second is going to be good. But this is basically saying the only way to turn the engine off is push the stop button. The only way to turn the engine on is to push the start button, but you don't have to hold it down the whole time. The, the car doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to be holding down the stop button to have the engine dead. If you use an OTU, it turns the engine off and the engine stays off until you push the start button. So that's kind of the difference between OTEs and OTL and U pairs. Um, but then let's look at another situation. Let's say you have just one button, um, right? Which is the normal. In, in most cars, um, there's only one button for start and stop, right? And so what you need to do is you need to check like, yes, I need to see what the status of this button is. But what you're going to do is going to depend on the current state of the engine. So if you have a start or stop button, it's going to either start or stop the car, but you have to check the current state of the engine. So this is an important thing to note. Even if you have something that you're controlling, like an engine or like a light, you can still use XICs and XIOs to check the status of those things. So let's say we have two different Let's say we have two different checks. We're saying if the engine is off and in if the engine is on. And we're gonna do two different things based on that, right? So if the engine is off, then when we push the button, we're going to turn it on, right? Let me drop this in place. And uh, I'll get into like some general formatting and style rules for writing uh, code after um, in a separate video. So if you're unfamiliar with like the purpose of these branches or how code actually scans through this program, I'll get into that in a separate video. But for now, understand this rung of code is basically saying 
if this button is being pressed and the engine is off, turn the engine on and leave it on. But if the button is pressed and the engine is on, then turn the engine off and leave it off. Um, this is useful for like a momentary button that does two different things depending on the state of your car. But you can think of this as still having a limitation because what if you're holding that button down, right? If you're holding that button down and the engine is off, you turn the engine on, but as soon as the engine is running, this code is going to turn the engine off. So this is pretty cool code, but there is something in uh, RS Logics and most PLC software that actually help you catch this scenario called a one shot saying when something happens, I basically only want to run this code one time. So let's say instead of this being an XIC, we have a one shot, which is essentially saying check as soon as this is true and do the following code once. So this means if you push the button and hold it down, you're not going to end up in a weird cycle where you're holding this button down, engines off, you turn the engine on and it immediately turns the engine off because this code is true. It's going to come through and whichever one of these two states is true at that time, it's going to do the following only once. So that's the purpose of a one shot. That's the difference between XICs and XIOs. And that's the difference between OTEs, OTLs, and OTUs. I know there's a lot in this video, but that really is the basics of using bit logic, using Boolean, binary, on off, true false logic, and PLC programming. There's obviously a million different iterations and problems you can run into doing these things, but that's really the core concept of how you can use um, bits. So uh, hopefully that was a useful introduction for you. If you have any questions on something specific, go ahead and let me know about in the comments and I can try to get back to you as soon as possible with some help. But in the meantime, if you found this or anything else on the channel useful, please go ahead and uh, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. And as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.